Hello and thank you for listening to the second season of the iStart PIA Relay podcast series brought to you by Dementia Researcher. iStart is a professional society and part of the Alzheimer's Association, representing scientists, physicians and other dementia professionals active in researching and understanding the causes and treatments of Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. In this five-part series, we have once again asked members of the iStart professional interest areas to take turns at interviewing their colleagues and being interviewed themselves, with the interviewee going on to be the next episode's interviewer. We'll be releasing one of these podcasts each day in the build-up to the Alzheimer's Association's International Virtual Conference to showcase the work of iStart PIAs. Thank you for listening. everyone and thanks for joining us. I'm Jennifer Whitwell. I'm a professor of radiology at Mayo Clinic, uh, Rochester, Minnesota in the USA. I'm the incoming chair of the Alzheimer's, atypical Alzheimer's disease peer, which focuses on research into non-memory clinical presentations of Alzheimer's disease. And today I'm delighted to be talking with Betty Times. Hello, Betty. Can I start by asking you to introduce yourself and tell us which peer you're involved with? Yes, hello. Um, I'm uh, Betty Times from the Alzheimer's Center in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and uh, I'm an associate professor there. And uh, I have a background in bioinformatics and psychology. And a lot of my research uh, involves structural MRI. And I'm the chair of the neuroimaging PIA for a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do you um, focus on Alzheimer's disease or other or a range of different neurodegenerative diseases? Um, yeah, I look at, at different diseases, but most of my work uh, focuses on Alzheimer's and then, yeah, the pre-dementia stages of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so that will be in people who are, uh, do not have dementia yet, but have at least an abnormal amyloid biomarker. Right. So what brought you to dementia research? How did you end up end up here? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So I've been thinking about that for well, this podcast, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, it seems very logical. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always been fascinated uh, in why people differ that much. So uh, and, and we can still understand each other, right? So, uh, um, well, we'll, we obviously differ in our, uh, the mother language that we speak. <laughs> so my right. Dutch and still, even with my uh, learned English, we can understand each other and it might not always be correct. Um, and I think that's fascinating, fascinating already in normal people. But then if you go to illness, it becomes uh, more relevant and also maybe more pronounced the differences between people. And um, is, especially in Alzheimer's disease, it's really fascinating. So I just said that I'm, I'm really interested in the, in the pre-dementia stages of Alzheimer's. And there you can see that um, having abnormal amyloid in the brain at a group level is not good news. So those people tend to decline in cognitive function. Um, but if you look at individuals, they vary so much. And I think this is something uh, that we need to better understand why some people maybe develop dementia within two years uh, after they had their first uh, measurement or why other people remain stable for 10 years and never develop dementia. Yeah, yeah, and I think neuroimaging is critical for that, right? Both for defining the patients you're looking at now that we have PET traces to look for proteins in the brain, I think, and, and to follow them over time and look at uh, different biomarkers in the brain. Um, so what do you think are the hot topics at the minute in the field of neuroimaging? Yeah, no, well, it's the biomarkers, and I would say it's the <laughs> blood markers, but that's not imaging. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, no, but I think it is imaging what makes 
uh, us better understand how well the blood markers are performing. Um, because you need to have some sort of gold standard. And in large, and you need large populations, especially because people differ that much. And that's where imaging is really important at the moment um, to better understand whether the tau and the amyloid we're measuring in the blood, whether it's really reflecting something we can see on a PET scan, for example. Right. Um, and also uh, structural MRI. The good old atrophy measure, it still remains so important because this is one of the measures that's more closely related to the cognitive symptoms that people develop and their rates of decline. So I think that's really uh, one of the whole topics and heterogeneity in diseases, of course. Yes, yeah, and that, that's where our atypical AD peer comes in because we look a lot at heterogeneity, particularly in Alzheimer's disease and how neuroimaging uh, relates to the heterogeneity we see in clinical presentation. And neuroimaging is vital for that, you know. I'm, I'm fascinated at the minute with all, we have all these techniques that allow us to look at so many different aspects of the brain with neuroimaging, you know, like the resting state and the, we have a diffusion tensor imaging to look at white matter tracks i think we're new imaging has such a ability to teach us about mechanisms of what's happening in the brain and how disease is spreading yeah and also um uh, more as even more advanced sequences so that now um it becomes uh, uh it's it's becoming so much uh, now yeah well not easier but more accessible for example to uh, image how uh, the blood brain barrier is functioning and yeah so we're really probing with these imaging uh techniques and the different sequences all the different aspects of how our brain is functioning or uh, deteriorating yeah yeah, yeah, I agree. There's a sort of almost endless um, possibilities for ways to probe different things that are happening with the brain with neuroimaging. It's a fascinating area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and what I like so much about neuroimaging, Pia, because you would almost think, why do we have a separate neuroimaging, Pia? Because imaging is really uh, uh, important for all the PS, I think. Um, but the nice thing is that we, we have this really broad um, spectrum of uh, uh, people involved in our PIA going from really hardcore physics to more applied um, uh, uh, medical doctors. And I think it's because we have all these different expertises that makes it really nice to be in the part of this whole PIA. Yeah, you know, and that leads me well into the next question, which is, tell us a little about how your peer supports your field of research, especially given this diversity, just how you pointed out, you have programmers on one end and physicians on the other end, and everybody's yeah. interested in using neuroimaging in different diseases. We have many different neurogenic diseases that fall under the rubric of the Alzheimer's yeah, Association. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and all diseases are welcome, of course in our PIA um, and um, so traditionally we would have an educational day that would be in front of the conference and then a full pre-conference day for the neuroimaging PIA, it's called the AIC with just one A. Uh, and we would have this very diverse program of talks that will cover these different aspects, some more the applied part of imaging and also um, uh, talks on, on recent developments in new techniques. Uh, and what is really nice about these uh, neuroimaging PIA days is that you have this relatively small group together in one room and that you can uh, you make people accessible. So the experts and also um, the juniors all together. But unfortunately, with COVID, we couldn't come yeah. together. <laughs> so this was really uh, yeah, hard for everyone, I think, but mostly for the junior scientists, I think. 
And yeah. this is um, why we thought that it would be a good idea to chop up our uh, normal schedule of the imaging day and then organize webinars around it. Mm -hmm. And also for the educational part. So right. we had this kind of um, two parallel uh, webinar series with very accessible educational topics so that you can learn what, an, what you actually do with an MRI and what different sequences are important for different other as aspects of the brain. Um, we recently had a, an educational session on how to use different types of software. Uh, and then in parallel, we had the new topics uh, webinars with uh, new advances in the fields. And uh, what I myself liked about that the most was that we would um, invite a couple of experts and then um, have a, a discussion amongst the panel themselves. And uh, the audience could ask questions through the chat. And we got so many questions and so high quality. And I think that um, this, this whole online medium kind of lowered the threshold for people to really get into this dialogue. Yeah, I agree. I've seen that too with our peer when we've had webinars. There's been a lot of engagement. People have been very interested. People have shown up to them and asked questions. And really, I think it's been really valuable for everybody. Um, I love the, the fact that um, your peer had the software related webinars because you know you do have people that are just trying to learn how to analyze brain scans and it's not straightforward so to learn about those major softwares I think is such a benefit to them as they're coming into the field um, as well as mixing it up with educational webinars. Um, another question I had I mean given the, the diversity of of the membership of the neuroimaging peer and it's a, a big peer you know there's a lot of people attend your your um alzheimer's day um i was going to ask you about collaborate collaboration and how you've been collaborating with other peers maybe through your webinars or since we're mainly virtual right now yeah yeah uh yeah it is through the webinar so it was with your peer that we would have had a a joint session so uh, yes yeah, and uh, the imaging day is a uh, members only uh, closed off day. It's very exclusive for neuroimaging folk. Um, and, but uh, with the atypical PM, we would have had the um, uh, first time ever that one part of our day would be open also for another PM. Uh, but what we are trying to do now is to collaborate through joint uh, webinars, indeed. Yeah. And uh, one is coming up in a, in a bit. Uh, the frontotemporal dementia peer next exactly. week. Exactly, yeah, I think in July, but it's also on our members page and a whole overview of all the activities that we have. Um, yeah, so I think that, that these webinars make it easier also to talk to each other and collaborate between the different peers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've seen some great ones come out from your peer. So, and I know about the one next week because I'm chairing it, the, the FDD one, remember? Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be a really nice one, Im yeah. imaging in FDD. Um, so tell us a little more about the committee. Like how's your group organized and, and who do you have on your committee? Yeah, oh, uh, so uh, we have Renaud Lechva. He's the vice chair and he'll be soon the real chair. And uh, um and we have uh, Laura Visse, who is the educational chair, and she's responsible for the educational sessions. Um, we have a communications uh, chair, Sam Lockhart. And then we have a senior committee member and a junior committee member. And uh, together, uh, uh, we try to kind of organize normally the uh, imaging day, but now, these other activities that we're doing. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and these calls that we have, an hour seems not enough <laughs> to discuss yeah. everything. Uh, and we made it quite hard for ourselves. So what we also have in the Neuroimaging PIA is um, an award for the best junior scientist and senior scientist paper. 
uh, and uh, uh, we had um, revised the criteria for this and made it more transparent to um, uh, select the best papers. So now we have a real independent committee and uh, with elected members in there. And uh, uh, this year we had so many papers being nominated. So I think this really helps. Yeah. And also this year we have an extra prize. So we have two kind of junior uh, awards and one senior award. Um, I think that's a great thing that you have the awards and that's been going on for a number of years now right as long, as long as I can remember yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah um so tell us how how do you think the early career researchers that are listening to us talking here can become involved in, in the PR um, yeah. or well, in the meeting it's really easy just go to the iStart website and become a member and then become a member of our PI and then um you can uh join and participate in whatever you want. So the imaging day is the most accessible one, I would think, because you can present a poster or maybe even have a talk. And because you have kind of a smaller selection of scientists on that day, that makes it easier to approach other people, I think. Um, but we also have a business meeting and uh, not a lot of people realize that it's really free to go there for everyone. And then you can have some real influence on uh, what the agenda will be like for the rest of the year. Yeah. So you can just s shout something that you think is important and we should organize. And you can also volunteer to help organizing because the, yeah, everyone can do something. It's yeah. Not the privilege of the executive committee. We do. Right, de definitely. And you, so are you having the educational workshops this year in this vir sort of virtual hybrid format or what's happening with the educational? Because those are good for junior members to sort of come yeah. along and just learn about the basics Absolutely. of neuroimaging and different diseases. Right? Yeah, so, um, well, in, in the hybrid version of the full conference, we have one or I think 30 minutes live. And then, well, we, we only have time for awards and, uh, we'll, and we also have a really special interactive session that's still secret. So ah. <laughs> <laughs> join and, and see what it is. Um, and I'm then, curious. <laughs> uh, but the uh, educational day that we usually have, we, we uh, have webinarized that as well. So uh, we'll have a new series of educational webinars with new speakers and maybe you'll get new information as well from that. Um, yeah, and we also still have the uh, research updates and um, so what's new from last year is that we uh, are selecting abstracts that were submitted to the Neuroimaging PIA this year. And we'll have one full webinar um, that will be dedicated to those abstracts. Not every, all the abstracts because it's way too many. Yes. <laughs> we're trying to uh, pick out um, uh, themes and uh, mostly junior scientists actually. Um, so I think for all the early career researchers, join and just ask your questions. That's it, and submit your abstracts, right? When yeah. we have the, the calls for abstracts and... Yeah, um, and, and join the business meeting <laughs> because yeah. then you can really uh, do something if you want to. You don't have to. You can also just join and listen because that's nice as well. Yeah, no, I think the business meetings are a great time that anybody can just come along and make a suggestion, right? The things that they like and don't like about the format and the meetings. Obviously, think everything is different this year from how it normally is. And it, maybe everything could be changed again next year. Who knows? But, I so hope so. I hope so. That it will change to real, in real life uh, <laughs> things. Yeah, I, I miss that. I definitely miss that. Um, so what is, what is your peers' aims for the coming year? What do you have um, scheduled or what, what are you thinking about doing over the next year? 
yeah so that will be mostly those webinars um and we want to keep on collaborating with other peers uh, and I think there are some plans of writing overview papers. Um, there's one collaboration with the, the biofluid biomarker. Oh, it's the BBBPN, so <laughs> biofluid biomarker. Ah, this is horrible. There's another B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's biomarkers in biofluids. So that's the most important part. Um, and I'm involved in that as well. And we're trying to synthesize some of the literature that imaging and biomarkers are, or biofluid markers are being combined. Um, but this will be a longer term project and um, everyone is welcome to join. Uh, but I think that the webinars will be um, taking up the most space uh, for the coming year. Yeah, given our virtual environment uh, still, though I think there's almost been a, not, not a blessing, or the, not a blessing, but I think this format has actually worked very well. The fact that we've all been forced to be virtual and have these webinars, I think it's forced us to, to do more to support the field and to be out there more with the webinar. So I think that's a, something, something good that's come out of this. Yeah, I agree. And it made the world smaller. Um, yeah, it's more accessible. I think it's great that I start made our web uh, webinars uh, freely accessible also for non members. Um, and also, well, we would have not have spoken together a couple of weeks ago, probably if it wasn't uh, for this online uh, thing. Uh, it's also with your colleague scientists that you get into contact more easily. And strange, yeah. because we could have picked up the phone earlier, but we would just wait for the conference <laughs> and then yes. in person. Yes, I know that's true. So at the um, are you presenting personally at the conference this year? Or maybe does the neuroimaging peer have a, an FRS or anything yeah. that you want to do a plug for? Yeah, we do. We have several FRSs. Um, uh, we have one FRS on uh, new uh, imaging methods, and that will be mostly on tracer development. And another FRS that we're involved in is a collaboration with the diversity PM. Oh, great. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I guess my, my final question that I have here is uh, really what advice would you give to any aspiring dementia researcher out there who's looking to get into dementia research or I guess neuroimaging, particularly since we're talking about neuroimaging today, in yeah. the neuroimaging field. In the neuroimaging field, yeah. So I think always follow your heart and your passion. I mean, research can be really hard and uh, especially in these times. So you need to feel this drive that you really want to solve something. And then it helps if you look for people who are passionate about their uh, topic as well and, and try to get into contact with them. And, uh, and I think another, um, uh, thing for junior scientists, don't be so hard on yourself. You don't need to be a specialist on all the topics. I think it's more a strength if you realize that you're not and that you uh, and that you realize that it's really nice to to talk to other people who do have a different expertise. And I think my best work comes out of collaborations with other people. And it's also more, it makes your work so much more fun. Um, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I don't think we ever stop learning. I, I think you, it's better to go into it not thinking you know everything and being open to, to ideas and to other people's opinions and, um, and to changing your ideas if, if that's what the research says, you know, be flexible. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, exactly. And, and I think the uh, longer I'm doing this, the more I realize that I really don't know anything. <laughs> 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 and every little step you put forward opens up this whole new box of new questions. But that's something I enjoy. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think that's something that's amazing about this field is that you can never know the answers, right? We are never, we, we don't know the answer. 
Um, so there's always questions to ask and things to discover, um, particularly with neuroimaging. Oh yeah, yeah, because it's, it, it always sounds as if you do know what you're looking at, but um, in reality, it's all pictures. So that neuroimaging on itself, apart from PET, but still also in PET, where you have a tracer and you know it's binding to amyloid, you all also have signals in your picture that might not be amyloid plaques. Yeah. Um, there's so much more information in these scans in all different sequences than what we're using now at the moment. So there's much more to learn, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, well, I, it's been a pleasure talking to you today, Betty. Thank you so much. Um, I think it's time to end today's podcast recording. But yeah, thank you so much, Betty. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. You can find profiles on today's panellists and information on how to become involved in iStart on our website at dementiaresearcher.nihr.ac.uk and also at als.org forward slash iStart. We'll be back tomorrow with the next recording in our iStart PIA Relay podcast series. Finally, please remember to like, subscribe and leave a review of our podcast. You can do this on our website and in your podcast app. Thank you. Brought to you by DementiaResearcher.nihr.ac.uk in association with Alzheimer's Research UK and Alzheimer's Society, supporting early career dementia researchers across the world. Hello, this is Adam Smith. I'm just dropping into the podcast stream to ask you a favour. Dementia Researcher has been nominated for a People's Choice Podcast Award and it would be fantastic if you would take a moment to vote for us. You'll find the link in the text below the podcast. But if you visit podcastawards.com, register an account, and you'll find Dementia Researcher in the Science and Medicine category. Choose us, hit submit, job done. Dementia Researcher is a real passion of mine. I so enjoy producing the podcast and occasionally hosting as well. All of our guests give up their time freely, and I think this would be a fantastic way to recognise their contribution and to help put important dementia research on the map. So please, if you have a moment, it would be fantastic if you could take the time to vote. Thank you very much for listening. And again, click the link in the text below or go to podcastawards.com by the 31st of July. Thank you.